throw two questions together because those are very similar and that will be helpful for our speaker to uh, give a comprehensive answer to both. Uh, the first thing is uh, like uh, why dating is haram in Islam uh, because if the person ha has the intention of marrying in order <laughs> to him in the future, then why he is not allowed or he show, she is not allowed to date, uh, to have a common understanding, to have a better understanding of the person, our, his or her character and everything. That's one. And similarly, other person as, uh, wants to know that how he or she can get rid of free mixing or from haram, haram relationship, uh, which is prohibited in Islam. So uh, how to balance those? I love how you laughed when you asked that question. That was my favorite part of the question. Okay. So, <laughs> um, my honest answer is that uh, dating is a, is, is a confusing term. And it implies that men and women have an indecent or um, inappropriate relationship that violates the principles of our religion. But let me just be very clear about what I'm convinced of, and I haven't seen evidence to the contrary ever. The Sahaba got married, and they got to know each other. They spoke to each other. They developed a mutual understanding. They even came to the point where I said, I like you. I think I want to marry you. Okay, well, I'll speak to my family. This happened. This, there was a, there's a natural, decent level of conversation that is completely permissible in our religion. There is no absolute segregation of society. If you study the life of Medina carefully, how did the Sahaba live in Medina? How did men and women interact in Medina? You will find that the kind of extreme segregation that we talk about uh, is not what was happening in Medina, actually. There was a respectful communication, a transparent communication with an awareness that there are principles in our religion that we must abide. That we, you, it's okay, guys, the ones that are listening, it's okay when you're in the university, you're about to graduate, you have a job lined up, and you like someone, that's not haram. To let them know that you like them and you'd like to pursue a conversation about marriage is not haram. But yeah, if you're going to create khalwa, and you're just by yourselves talking to each other until three in the morning and all this other stuff is okay, fine. Now you're, you're getting into trouble. But if you can be respectful in public space and get to know somebody and transparent and even the daughters that are sitting here can let their fathers know, listen, there's this, this young man in university. He w wishes to speak to me. I'd like to speak to him too. Is that okay with you? That is okay. That is not a wrong thing. There's nothing that I've seen in our deen's literature that says that that is condemned in any way, shape, or form. Because if you don't get to know someone, you don't get to understand their personality, their likes and dislikes, their sense of humor, etc. And you just say, oh, well, they look like they pray. His, his beard is long enough. I think that's good enough. You might end up in a disaster. These people might end up hating each other in a month. And now they're they're together because now they're feeling guilty that I just got married to someone for Islam. That's not Islam. Islam is not saying you should get married to perfect strangers because your parents tied you up. That Islam never said any of this. So we have, and I don't advocate open dating culture either. There's a normal middle. There's a normal, Islam has given us decent guidelines. Follow those guidelines and it's perfectly okay for you to get to know somebody that you're interested in for marriage. You know? We're not we're not the liberal West either, where there's always try before you buy, and we're not the extreme either, where you just go blind and your 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 mom said okay, marry this girl, and you're gonna marry this girl. It's not like that either. You as a man and a woman have a choice and you have a right to explore whether or not this person is good for you, whether you're or not you even like having a conversation with them. And when the time comes to have a conversation, if you're going to be awkward and say. No, whatever you say is okay. I'm happy. Well, if you're, you're, you're not going to be talking like that when you get married. And the fight's going to be so loud. <laughs> and even the guy's going to be like, what happened to you? That's not, that was not your volume when we first spoke. You said everything is okay. Now nothing is okay. What happened here? That's because we are too afraid to have open, transparent conversation about our likes, our dislikes, our boundaries, our comfort zones. If a, if, a, if a young man is 
you know, has guidelines and says, hey, when I get married, I would be very uncomfortable if my wife did this, this, and this. What do you think about that? And the, the girl says, well, you know, I wouldn't like it if you had, uh, you know, if you continue to talk to other women on social media or you do this, that, or the other, if you, ha that will make me uncomfortable. You can discuss, you know, your boundaries. You can discuss what you think would hurt your feelings. You can discuss what you think you expect in a marriage, right? Those are important conversations. That's the rest of your life. That is the rest of your life. What are we, a, a young woman should ask, what do you think your mother, what I should do with your mother? That's an important question. Because if, if your mother asked me to do something, should I just consider that a command from you? Or, am, or is that separate? Because in our deen, it's separate. Right? In our culture, this is not, but in our deed, separate. You owe a responsibility to your husband. You don't owe it to your husband's extended family or anybody else. He owes it to them, not you. He didn't marry you to make you a servant to his mother. He married you because he wants to have a relationship with you where he takes care of things for you and you take care of things for him. That's the deal. Maybe you should be discussing that. Maybe you should be getting clarity on these things before you end up getting married, having an expensive nikah, mendi, walima, party, all that stuff. And then at the end of the day, two months later, there's drama, crying, breaking plates, yelling and screaming, depression. What have I done? Save yourself the trouble. Our deen did not impose unnatural restrictions. Our deen gave moral, ethical, spiritual guidelines. Just follow those and it should be okay. This is the same advice. I'm not just telling this advice to my young brothers and sisters. This is the same advice I would give my own children. I would give my children no different advice. 